Hello and welcome to this one credit playthrough of Bucky O'Hara on the NES. My name is Carlos. I am a handsome fat man. I have a gaming podcast. You can check my channel for that. Who cares? This is about the 1cc run of Bucky O'Hara, a very cool Mega Man alternative for the NES. Gameplay is very reminiscent of Mega Man. And, you know, you got your jumping, you got your shooting, you got your various powers that you can get, although in this game's case, the powers are the characters. Here, I'm going to the Yellow Planet first to recruit Willie DeWitt, who has been kidnapped. Well, all the characters have been kidnapped, except for Bucky. I get Willie, partly because I like Willie DeWitt, he was my favorite character from the show, and partly because he's got a freaking awesome laser, and having that laser makes a lot of the bosses later a big joke. Uh, quite essential, as I am not a speedrunner at all, and I need every edge I can get to finish this rather difficult game with one credit. My next goal is to finish it with one life, but that will not be happening in this playthrough. Here you can see I have no idea what I'm doing, and I'm basically hitting every worm with my face. That seems to be the M strategy I'm using here. I will attack everything with my face. Gun, face, toad, face. And just face butt that turret. Face butt this spaceship. I think those were called double bubbles in the show, and they were way bigger than that. They certainly weren't the size of Bucky himself. But for those of you who don't know about the show, Bucky O'Hare was a cartoon from the, I want to say, 90s? And it was about the Anniverse, a universe of furries, basically. Uh, Willie DeWitt was the only human in the crew because he came from the real world, and he was some kind of super genius who made a device, or by accident or on purpose, I don't fucking remember. Uh, I swear, by the way. He made this device that basically transplanted him, didn't transplant him, made a portal, and it appeared as like a door, and he would open the door to his bedroom and he would be on Bucky O'Hare's ship, so he was the science member of the crew. Not sure how that works when you're science crew member guy lives in an alternate universe, but whatever. Uh, oh yeah, that's right, because uh, Bruce Baboon was killed or something, so Willie DeWitt kind of uh, replaced him as their science guy. Anywho, the point of the matter is that Willie DeWitt is a science guy and not really a fighter, so the fact that they made him the most damage-inducing character in this game is kind of funny. In fact, I think when Konami made this game, they didn't really know what Bucky O'Hare was. Like, they called the ship the Righteous in the opening cutscene, when it's supposed to be the Righteous Indignation. And a lot of the characters talk in bad English, Japangrish, whatever you want to call it, and say lines that they themselves might not say. This was alleviated in, the, in Konami's Bucky O'Hare arcade game, which continued the story of the show since the show was cancelled before its plot got resolved and had a lot of the same voice actors, but we're not talking about that. We're talking about the Yellow Planet, which, well, it's it's not too bad, I, I died there because I'm an idiot, but it's generally, the game kind of steers you towards here last, and I don't go for it last because I kind of like to have Willy right away, and the characters I like the least, both to play as in this game and both just in general because I'm a picky bastard, are Blinky and Jenny, even though I totally thought Jenny and Willy had a thing going. Uh, they, I, I know they probably didn't, don't fucking ruin this for me. Anywho, so this meteor part is normally not too tough for me, I'm not sure why it's presenting such a challenge right now. Uh, this will be easily 1cc just because, well, uh, I'm not sure if you can tell, but I, I, I played this before and I'm just talking over it now. This will be pretty easily 1cc'd, partly because this game throws 1-ups at you quite liberally, and partly because I'm fairly familiar with the layout of this game. Hmm, you know, recording commentary over the game, I thought it was going to be a little easier. I'm kind of running out of things to talk about. Uh, okay, so these red meteors, they, they travel at an angle, and they are fixed, and when you jump near one, you kind of immediately get on it. And jumping on that last one there kind of killed me a couple times. This is a little shortcut I take here, because originally when I played this ROM, it, uh, the, the, uh, the Jeez, words. The DRM, yes, NES games had that, was uh, finding a bad checksum. It realized this was not a legitimate copy of the game, so it was putting... It was making this part pretty much impossible, 
and, and Buckyo here did that. If, if, it, if it sensed you had an illegitimate copy of the game, it would put like little mini platforms on this part so you wouldn't be able to, to uh, progress, at least not very easily. Anywho, uh, I, I found the ROM that pretty much fixed that. Uh, what was I talking about again? Right. So I took that shortcut at the beginning. That was way at the beginning that I probably shouldn't even be talking about right now because it's way over. This part was famously featured in Mike Matei's overview of Bucky O'Hare. This was his number two most underrated NES game, and with good reason. It's a really good game. Did you see the beginning of the stage? It had freaking parallax scrolling. A whole bunch of this game has parallax scrolling. This is an NES game. Parallax scrolling was not a thing in a lot of NES games. Here, I made a big mistake fighting the boss, and I immediately took out the satellite thing, which makes the boss a lot harder. It makes dodging those wavy shots nigh impossible, because that happens. And I forgot I died there, so yeah, let's try this again. So what you're supposed to do on this boss, ideally, kill the wavy gun shot thing first. And that will make dealing with the rest of the boss a lot easier. From here, the only real choice you have is to take out that satellite thing that makes it go um, berserk. But by then, you'll have taken out the wavy gun thing and you won't be getting hit all the damn time just for standing around. Because you kind of have to duck in there to avoid getting insta-killed and the wavy gun is going to hit you pretty much guaranteed. If I was playing this game on hard mode like a masochist where one hit kills you all the time every time, I would have needed to do this. I'm probably not going to play this game hard mode because I'm not a masochist. The only games I'm really trying to get good at are certain fighting games. Shoutouts to the Edmonton fighting game community. Um, I went to Canada Cup, sucked at Persona 4 Arena, got blown up on stream, James Chen like my Metroid hat. Right, this boss. So you gotta attack the eye here. Tiny target. As long as you just avoid the laser and touching the boss proper, you will be fine. And just explodes right on top of Bucky, as we all know, Bucky immune to explosions. Very famously so, from his tenure on the show. Explosions just don't seem to have an effect on Cap'n O'Hare. Thanks, Bucky. While I was held captive, I kept one shot does all blaster, can call it Thummer. Press the fire button, it just gets stronger. Willie DeWitt has the ugliest fucking sprite I've ever seen. For, for a game this beautiful, he looks like a fucking monkey, and I think. Again, that, that, look at that beautiful background, with parallax rolling, listen to this awesome music, this game was brilliant, brilliant and fun, and great, challenging, but fair platforming gameplay, I love it. Anywho, Willie DeWitt has the dumbest fucking sprite I've ever seen, he looks like a retarded monkey, not just a regular monkey, a retarded one. Uh, no offense to people with actual mental, uh, mentally challenged type folks, I'm probably one of you. Anywho. <laughs> That's right, I don't care who I offend. Willie has Mega Man's Charge Cannon, except he can't move while he's charging. A game mechanic I really like, because in Mega Man, I always felt like I wasn't playing optimally unless I was holding down the stupid button anytime I wasn't shooting. I always thought it should have charged automatically. And I know there's a bunch of you old classic, old school gamers who go like, Man, why would it charge automatically? That's just learn to play, and uh, to that I say shut the fuck up, I've probably been playing games longer than you've been alive, and I really don't see the point in making you hold a button when the default action is, or the ideal action is that you want to hold it all the time. I have the same complaint with Mario games. I love that in Yoshi's Island, I didn't have to hold a fucking button to run, but in every other Mario game that wasn't Mario 1, my finger never leaves the B button, or the 1 button on the Wii. Oh, the shitty we I'll complain about that later and probably piss off a lot of you Nintendo fanboys. Shoutouts to Nintendo fanboys for being the dumbest fanboys outside of Sonic fanboys uh, in, in gaming. I'm pretty proud of this part. This is the Quick Man lava part. And that lava stream kills you in one shot. And I am so proud of myself that I managed to do that uh, using not using Blinky, who has a smaller sprite and therefore makes this easier, on my first go. Haha, <laughs> take that, games. Also, when I won Life Mega Man 2, I did Quick Man first, although I don't have that video recorded. You're just gonna have to take my word for it. Again, not a speedrun. Oh, Konami, Flame Jets. I'm pretty sure they just copy pasted this from. Lost my train of thought completely. That game. R type? R type? Radius? Whatever. 
it looks a lot like that one stage where you're traveling on the sun. Uh, my apologies for seeing me skipping and whatnot. It might have been when I was actually re doing this playthrough I had to pause here and there, or it might be because I'm using iMovie to compile this video because I am a poor bastard and I can't afford anything better. I also don't want to pay Adobe $79 American for their most basic video editing software. And, and, and fuck Adobe anyway. Shoutouts to Adobe. Plus, I live in Canada, so that $79 is probably $287. I'm an aspiring screenwriter, and when I bought Final Draft, I could have bought it in Canada for like 200 bucks, or I, I could have bought it from YouTube for 80 bucks and had it shipped for another 30. It was still cheaper. I just call Final Draft in the States and ask for an electronic copy these days anyway. Shoutouts to Final Draft, they're really cool guys. Anyway, back to the playthrough. I'm, I've never known if those drills kill you in one hit because now and when I was a kid, I've never ever touched them. So, I don't know if they kill you in one shot. I'm not even sure how this platform kind of works, like, it's, it's drilling the platform, which is making it squeeze in, but they're flying, and someone hucking, whatever. This room is another example of awesome NES parallax scrolling the likes of which very few games showed off. Uh, I think a few later Mega Mans did, and the famous but slightly overrated ROM hack Mega Man 4 Minus Infinity also has quite a bit of parallax scrolling. Shoutouts to Pure Sabe for making that. It, it, it's good, but it's not perfect. It doesn't deserve all the accolades it gets, I think. Maybe I'll talk about that another time. Man, I have no idea if this is interesting at all to anyone, anywhere. So, maybe, uh, let's talk more about this giant bowling ball. Giant bowling ball is rolling, but Willie DeWitt, shoutouts to Willie DeWitt, is totally able to just stand on it and not fall off. I suspect his boots are greased, or this game was not programmed with that in mind. Ooh. Just skipping that one up there, because the game throws enough of my way anyway. This boss is somewhat annoying if you don't kill him on the first phase here, because he starts rolling and you need to do Bucky O'Hare charge jumps to get over him to avoid being crushed in one shot at the side of the screen. Uh, people say it's easy, I never wanted to deal with it. That's why I get Willy DeWitt and I just kill him in a few shots there. And with this, I saved Deadeye Duck, who when I was a kid was my favorite character, because he looked like Donald Duck, and Donald was always my favorite character from Disney, because he was a character and not a bullshit-ass hero like Mickey. And I can see I'm getting to the end of this very first clip here. This is probably going to be six parts overall. So enjoy the beginning of the green planet here with Deadeye Duck, Jenny Girl, Willy Lad. He always talked like that. I do a poor impression. See you all next time. Bucky O'Hare! Ah!